hello so this is the first ever med mom video um, I've been thinking long and hard about what I want to say and I've really come up with a whole lot of nothing so I've decided I'm just going to tell you my story so my name is Amy I am 41 years old and I use cannabis for pain um, I work in a high-end dispensary in Las Vegas um, I was born with scoliosis so I've had two scoliosis surgeries uh, my first one I was 14 my second one I was 33 um, I'm fused from T2 all the way down to L4 uh, basically uh, scoliosis is the curvature of the spine and mine was so bad that I was going hunchback uh, the doctor said that I would be in a wheelchair by early 20s and that I wouldn't be walking so my surgery was going to have to happen so 14 I had my surgery and the doctor actually took a picture of me on the operating table with my back wide open right after he inserted and put the bars in and did everything he was like okay I'm done they woke me up I don't remember this but I was told they woke me up halfway through the surgery of my spine I'm wide open on the table see this this is a three-prong retractor that is in the bottom of my hip because they had to take out some uh, they had to take a bone graft or something and replace part it's a, I don't know I don't even really remember anymore it's just yeah so that's my spine with the bars in my back it looked like a piece of ground beef 2,000 stitches later I'm straight two and a half inches taller no more hunchback um, they gave me some I think it was on Tylenol 3 at the time with codeine or something like that I was young they held pretty good ran around I was just a normal teenager Dr. Camp did an amazing job um, later got pregnant in my 20s early 20s I was 20 actually had my son at 21 still doing good um, didn't really have to take any much medication at the time maybe an Advil or something now and then pain cold temperatures really sucked when it rained that's when I hurt um, other than that I was fine so after I got pregnant with my daughter I noticed that the scoliosis had come back well didn't notice I noticed a lot of back pain had to go back to a back surgeon um, they noticed scoliosis was coming back when the bottom of my spine was curving the only part that didn't have the bars in it anymore it took me probably about a couple of years a few years of just fighting pain lots and lots of pain I didn't want surgery I didn't want anyone to cut me open again I was not going back in I was not going to have 2,000 stitches I was not going to I was not going to go through all this again so we did uh, pain management for years and that just was pills on pills on pills um, after my second surgery I had a lot of trouble I had a lot of trouble with my tendons healing I had a lot of trouble walking I just I didn't heal like I did after my last surgery this one just seemed to be so much harder I don't know if it's because it's older I don't know but I ended up taking a lot of medication a lot of medication every time I turn around is medication um, so back to physical therapy I did physical therapy I did pain management nothing seemed to work they just kept putting me on more and more pills more and more pills um, but I had children and I knew that cannabis worked better for pain because it's pretty much what I did before you smoke a little joint or something pain would go away and you know but I had kids and it was illegal and unless you had your medical card and all this stuff and my husband's like I don't want CPS take the kids just take your pills okay fine take my pills take my pills basically I'm sleeping 20 hours a day now I can barely walk um, he's having to do just about everything because I can't get a job I can't watch our kids I can't I can't do anything anymore so um, so we decided let's go get a medical marijuana card I go down to the doctor 
she goes over all my scripts, she goes over all my stuff that I'm doing, she's like, you are a good candidate for this, let's, let's get you your card. So, I get my card, and I'm like, okay, now what? Where do I go get this? And she's like, I can't tell you, sweetheart, there is no dispensaries in the city. Okay? Um, so let's say I get a hold of some, what do I do with it? Like, how much do I smoke? What's, what's gonna be comparable to these pills? How do I get off these pills? How do I use cannabis and not pills anymore? And they're like, we don't know. We don't. We can't tell you. We don't have any. Here's your card. Good luck. Okay. Okay. So that's basically what I got. So this is where we had dispensaries. This is before we had places that you can go and talk to people and like go into a dispensary and talk to your bud tender and be like, hey, you know. I didn't know what a terpene was. I didn't know what a dose was. I didn't actually quite understand how THC worked with the body. I didn't I didn't know what an endocannabinoid system is. I didn't know what a C2 receptor was. Like there's so much I've learned now. But in that time, didn't know nothing. I had a friend who could get me some pot. He used to give me pot every week. I'd smoke, take a little bit less of a pill. That's all it was really doing. Uh, my pain management was working with me at the time. They knew that I had a pain uh, or a medical marijuana card. They did not care. They said it was fine, that it was okay. That they would work with me to help me get off of these pills because my doctor was just awesome like that. And he was like, I hate to see you. Like, I've been with you for years and you're still taking pills. Like, we've got to find an alternative. And I'm like, yes, we do. Can you help me with this? Like, I have every month I have to take a drug test. And if I fail this drug test, I don't get my prescription but I really want to use cannabis to take away some of these pills, but I can't just stop pills cold turkey. I'll go through withdrawals. Like, I'm not ready for this. And we'll help you. We'll work with you. You can go ahead and take your drug tests. Uh, we will not test you for marijuana, or if the THC shows up, we will scratch that. Not a big deal. As long as it's just THC that's showing up in your system, we don't care. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Got my card started smoking, slowly took away some of the pills. Um, about a little while later, I met a woman named Sandy who introduced me to edibles and how to make my own butters, how to make um, lotions, how to make pain lotions that you could rub on your joints and stuff that helped. Um, she taught me how to make um, not really tinctures, I taught myself tinctures later, but she did teach me how to make gummies, she taught me how to make edibles, she taught me how to make infused ice cream, she taught me how to do all kinds of stuff. Once I learned what an edible could do for my body, game changer, game changer, because that was accessing a different receptor that I didn't even know existed and was helping my body heal, like heal, really heal, and giving me just relief that I've been looking for for so many years. So edibles, edibles, and I'll talk about C1 receptors, C2 receptors, and all that fun stuff later. But yes, so I got edibles. Um, I've got my medical card. I'm slowly getting off all these pills. It took it took a while, a couple of years. I got off everything. Still had to go through withdrawals. I mean, there is no way around it. Cannabis can only do so much, but in the end, you're gonna go through withdrawals. Once you get through all of that, you will feel 100 times better. Um, so. Now, I know how to make edibles. And the edibles are actually working the way the somas used to work, the way the Lord's tabs used to work, and it's getting rid of the pain, and I'm sleeping less, and I'm taking less pills, and I'm able to start cutting them out. And so I'm telling the doctors, okay, look, like, we're gonna take away two of my pills out of every day's dose. And then it was three, and then it was four, and then it was, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, I still went through withdrawals. I had days where I couldn't get up. I had days where it, it, it was not happening slowly but surely after about years a few years I mean I've been off pills now for about three years now and I'm 41 so it took a while um, about four years ago uh, right before I had I was still taking just a few of the pills and I was trying to get to the last little bit get off the last little bit um, and I noticed I was moving more. Uh, I was still having a lot of trouble though. I wasn't really able to walk on my own, not long distances. 
Um, I'd have to sit, I'd have to get a wheelchair, I'd have to get a walker, I had a cane. Um, so we decided we're gonna get a service animal. I had my medical marijuana card now. I was dosing myself, I was getting off the scripts. Um, my kids were getting older. Um, let's get a dog. So we ended up getting a English Mastiff, Karma, my baby. She is somewhere, she's in here. She's always in here. She's over there on the floor. She's sleeping. So I got Karma. Karma is my English Mastiff. She is my mobility service animal. So we got her when she was about six weeks old. Um, we trained together. We went through puppy training, we went through obedience training, uh, and then we went through service training. And the three years it took me to train her, because um, this dog was scared of everything. I guess Mastiffs are notorious for being terrified of everything. She was terrified with cars. She, we had to get over wheels. We had to get over cardboard boxes. We had to get over just people, uh, everything. So a lot of training. This dog would not even walk upstairs for two years. It took me two years to get her to actually walk up a flight of stairs. By the time I was done training with her, I had a personal trainer or private trainer that would work with us and we would go to like the mall, we would go to the airport, we would go to you name it, we went there to try and get this dog ready to be a service animal. By the time we finished, I could walk, I could move, I couldn't run, but I could do stairs, I could do all this stuff. And I actually didn't really need her anymore. I mean, she's still my service animal, but I didn't need her as much for mobility as I thought I was going to because after three years of training with her for mobility, she made me so strong that I could walk again. And, and I still use her for that, trust me. I mean, I have days where I wake up and it's not happening. If it's cold outside, if it's rainy outside, like mama doesn't move. So that's what I have her for now. But in the years of training her, like she got me so strong that I was like, wow, like I could go back to work. I, I could get a job again. I, I could function as a human being. So my husband and I were like, okay, well, we got one kid almost out of high school. We got one kid going into high school. Like, I mean, my baby's grown now. So I was like, uh, I think I want to try and go back to work. And my husband's like, yes, please, like, you know, he needed a break. He's been taking care of us for a while. So I was like, what am I going to do? Um, I've been a stay at home mom for 14 years. Like before that I worked in the casinos and the box office. So like I did concerts and stuff like that. And you know, but I was like, I really don't want to go back to selling concert tickets again. Like, you know, I was thinking, now it's recreational in Vegas. It's not just about being medical anymore. We have dispensaries. Dispensaries have been open for about a year. And I was like, hey, maybe I could go work in one of those dispensaries. I taught myself how to dose. I taught myself how to make edibles. Well, no, Sandy taught me how to make edibles. I taught myself how to make tinctures, you know, but I had at least a little bit of idea of what to do. So I started applying for dispensaries and I got shot down. Most of them you had to have a year's experience, kind of needed to know a little bit more what you were talking about. They really didn't care if you had a medical card or not. So that didn't really work out. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll start taking some classes. It was on edibles. They have classes on concentrates. They have classes on how to work in a dispensary. They, I found Cannabis 101 classes and I studied studied, I learned about cannabinoids, I learned about terpenes, I learned about all kinds of things that I didn't realize, like I just thought, you know, weed was weed. You smoke a little, you get high, you feel better, you're not so nauseous, pain goes away, hey, you know, you can make it in a concentrated form, you put in an edible, it works six to eight hours instead of a half hour, you know, like. Hello, welcome, and this is going to be the very first Med Mom video. Um, my name is Amy. I've thought long and hard about what I want to talk about. Really, I've come up with nothing. So I've decided that I'm going to tell you my story. So, hello. I'm 41 years old. Um, I work in a high-end cannabis dispensary. And I use cannabis for pain. Mm, why, you ask? Because uh, I was born with scoliosis. And that's the curvature of the spine. Uh, so my first surgery, I was 14, 
Um, I had a second surgery again when I was 33 after I had my kids. Um, so I'm fused from T2 all the way to L4. So my whole spine. Insert. This is where I'm going to show my x-rays. Insert. This is where I'm going to show my after x-rays. All done. So after my surgery, after I had my surgery, or no. So x-rays. After x-rays. So when I had my surgery, uh, the doctor ended up taking a Polaroid of me on the operating table with my back wide open. And it shows the bars in my back and everything. So I'm going to show you this photo. It's a little gruesome, just so you know, but this is pretty much what it is. So this is my spine. Insert photo here. Okay. So that's my spine. That is pretty gross. I understand. I ended up okay. Spine. Okay. Show X-rays. And then this is what I look like from the inside. After my surgery, so after my surgery, I was given Tylenol 3 with coating. I wasn't in a whole lot of pain. It seemed to heal pretty nice. You know, I was young, you know, 15 years old, not a problem. Bounced right back. Um, I found out I was allergic to morphine during my surgery. So then I found out I was allergic to Percocets. So those were no longer options. Uh, never mind. Uh, Polaroid surgery. So after my surgery, I was given, uh, I think Tylenol three with coating, which wasn't a big deal. I healed very well. I had a good time. Got back to being normal. Then after, so got through high school, ended up being 20, got pregnant with my son. Pregnancy was fine. Didn't have a lot of problems with my spine. Um, I had to have natural childbirth because they couldn't get the needle through my spine. So no epidural for me. All in all, wasn't that bad. Then I got pregnant with my daughter about five years later. And I don't know if it was the way I carried her or what happened. All I know is my spine started curving again. Not where the bars were, but the lower part of my spine that I had left. The only few vertebrates I even had left. So those started to curve. So I had to go back. I was in a lot of pain. I didn't understand what was going on. And so they started me on physical therapy. They started me on pain management. Um, saw the doctors for years, just back and forth, trying to figure out what was going on. I didn't want to have surgery. So I was trying everything I could to not have surgery. Finally, I think seven years later of constantly taking pills, constantly going to doctors, constantly just with all the side effects I was having from the pills, I was losing the ability to walk. Sometimes I would just go numb from the waist down and fall. I couldn't live like that. I couldn't work. I couldn't do, I couldn't take care of our kids. My husband was working two jobs at the time trying to support us all um, and taking care of the kids and helping any way he could. And I was just a mess. I was sleeping all the time. I was just on all kinds of pills and I was basically worthless. Tried disability twice, got denied for it. And I was like, okay, fine. I, there's gotta be something else. So I went ahead and had the second surgery. Um, I just seemed to have a lot of complications after. I, I couldn't seem to walk anymore. I was having trouble with my ligaments. I was just, I, I wasn't healing the way that I thought I was gonna heal. So it was just more pills, more physical therapy, mm, just more, more and more and more doctors, more and more. I'm, there wasn't really another surgery that they could do that was gonna make anything better. They were just gonna cut in, cut me open and make things worse, so. Um, my mom kept telling me, you know, you need to stop taking all these pills. They're gonna kill you. They're gonna kill your liver. All these people are overdosing on them. Like you need to go smoke some weed. And she was a huge hippie and she didn't like pills anyway. 
and all she wanted to do was smoke pot. She was like, just smoke pot. I'm like, whatever, mom, you're a pothead. Yeah. So I went to my doctor and I was like, okay, I'm considering switching to cannabis. Like, how do we do this? Like, what are we going to do here? Am I going to be able to get my prescriptions? Because I had to take a monthly drug test. And if I, pa if I failed that drug test, I didn't get my prescriptions. And if I didn't get my prescriptions, I went through withdrawals, major withdrawals, like not kidding. So he was like, okay, let's do this. You go get your card um, and we'll work with you. And I had kids at home too. And like, you know, I had to talk to my husband, like, you know, what are we going to do with this? The whole reason I'm taking all these pills is because, you know, they'll take our kids if I'm a stay at home mom smoking dope, you know, we can't do that. And he was like, let's go get her card. Let's see what happens. So I went, we got my medical card and I look at the doctor and I'm like, okay, now what, what do we do? Get me a joint. And she's like, there's no dispensaries here legally. I can't tell you how to find this. I can't even tell you how to dose. Here's your medical marijuana card. Good luck to you. And I'm like, that's it? This, this is what the medical marijuana industry looks like in Las Vegas? You're gonna hand me a card and tell me good luck, but I can't tell you where to get it. I can't tell you how to dose. You're gonna have fun. Thank God I had a friend who a new friend who could get some dope, you know, who could at least get me some pot. So I went ahead, got pot, and I'm smoking. And it's helping a little bit, but I mean, it's not, I can't just stop taking my pills, I'll go through withdrawals. And this wasn't actually strong enough to take away all the pain. So I'm still taking my pills, smoking pot, trying to figure things out. And I met this woman named Sandy. And Sandy's like, oh, sweetheart, I know how to do this. I've been taking medicine, or I've been taking marijuana for pain for years. You need to get edibles. And I'm like, okay, what, what like a brownie? Okay, whatever, I guess I'll try a brownie. Game changer. Let me tell you, when you access those C2 receptors, when you are in pain, we'll talk about those receptors in another video, but yes, so edibles, game changer. So now I know how to make edibles and the edibles are actually working the way the somas used to work, the way the Lord's tabs used to work and it's getting rid of the pain and I'm sleeping less and I'm taking less pills and I'm able to start cutting them out. And so I'm telling the doctors, okay, look like, we're going to take away two of my pills out of every day's dose. And then it was three and then it was four. And then it was, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I still went through withdrawals. I had days where I couldn't get up. I had days where it, it, it was not happening slowly, but surely after about years, a few years. I mean, I've been off pills now for about three years now and I'm 41. So it took a while. Um, about four years ago, uh, right before I, had, I was still taking just a few of the pills and I was trying to get to the last little bit, get off the last little bit. Um, and I noticed I was moving more. Uh, I was still having a lot of trouble though. I wasn't really able to walk on my own, not long distances. Um, I'd have to sit, I'd have to get a wheelchair, I'd have to get a walker, I had a cane. Um, so we decided we're gonna get a service animal. I have my medical marijuana card now. I was dosing myself. I was getting off the scripts. Um, my kids were getting older. Um, let's get a dog. So we ended up getting a English Mastiff, Karma, my baby. She is somewhere. She's in here. She's always in here. She's over there on the floor. She's sleeping. So I got Karma. Karma is my English Mastiff. She is my mobility service animal. So we got her when she was about six weeks old. Um, we trained together. We went through puppy training, we went through obedience training, uh, and then we went through service training. And the three years it took me to train her, because um, this dog was scared of everything. I guess Mastiffs are notorious for being terrified of everything. She was terrified with cars. We had to get over wheels. We had to get over carpet boxes. We had to get over just people, uh, everything. So a lot of training. This dog would not even walk upstairs for two years. It took me two years to get her to actually walk up a flight of stairs. By the time I was done training with her, I had a personal trainer or private trainer that would work with us and we would go to like the mall. We would go to the airport. We would go to, you name it, we went there to try and get this dog ready to be a service animal. 
by the time we finished, I could walk, I could move, I couldn't run, but I could do stairs, I could do all this stuff. And I actually didn't really need her anymore. I mean, she's still my service animal, but I didn't need her as much for mobility as I thought I was going to because after three years of training with her for mobility, she made me so strong that I could walk again. And, and I still use her for that, trust me. I mean, I have days where I wake up and it's not happening. If it's cold outside, if it's rainy outside, like mama doesn't move. So that's what I have her for now. But in the years of training her, like she got me so strong that I was like, wow, like I could go back to work. I, I could get a job again. I, I could function as a human being. So my husband and I were like, okay, well, we got one kid almost out of high school. We got one kid going into high school. Like, I mean, my babies are grown now. Like, what are we gonna do? And I was like, I would really like to go back to cannabis. Well, no. And he was, okay, what would you like to do now? And I was like, I would like to go back to work. I'm gonna try for one of these dispensaries. So now I'm moving and I can walk again and I can be on my feet for more than 20 minutes at a time. I could actually stand for at least five hours, which was new to me. I, I hadn't experienced that in a really long time. So I'm like, okay, I can do this. And I was a stay-at-home mom. And the kids were getting older, um, you know. I've got this dog, but I can I can do stuff now. So I was like, uh, I think I want to try and go back to work. And my husband's like, Yes, please. Like, you know, he needed a break. He's been taking care of us for a while. So I was like, What am I gonna do? Um, I've been a stay-at-home mom for 14 years. Like. Before that, I worked in the casinos and the box office. So like I did concerts and stuff like that. And, you know, but I was like, I really don't want to go back to selling concert tickets again. Like, you know, I was thinking now it's recreational in Vegas. It's not just about being medical anymore. We have dispensaries. Dispensaries have been open for about a year. And I was like, hey, maybe I could go work in one of those dispensaries. I taught myself how to dose. I taught myself how to make edibles. Well, no, Sandy taught me how to make edibles. I taught myself how to make tinctures, you know, but I had at least a little bit of idea of what to do. So I started applying for dispensaries and I got shot down. Most of them you had to have a year's experience, kind of needed to know a little bit more what you were talking about. They really didn't care if you had a medical card or not. So that didn't really work out. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll start taking some classes. So I thought I'll start taking classes. They have classes. They have classes on edibles. They have classes on concentrates. They have classes on how to work in a dispensary. They, I found cannabis 101 classes and I studied. I studied, I learned about cannabinoids. I learned about terpenes. I learned about all kinds of things that I didn't realize. Like I just thought, you know, weed was weed. You smoke a little, you get high, you feel better. You're not so nauseous, pain goes away. Hey, you know, I took an edibles class. I took a concentrates class. I took a class on how to get into a dispensary. I turned, took a class on how to be a bud tender. I took a class on 101 cannabis. I just, I took a class on how to make pet uh, CBD edibles. I took a class on how to make, um, uh, CBD bath bombs, I mean, anything I could think of. If it had marijuana in it, I wanted to know how to make it. I wanted to know how to take it. I wanted to know how to tell somebody to take it. I wanted, I wanted to know everything. I went and got my dispensary card. I went and got my cultivation card. Um, so that way if I could just, I would just trim if I had to. Whatever I had to do, I would start at the bottom of the barrel. Whatever I could do, I just wanted to get into the cannabis community. Like how do I get into this industry? How do I start? So eight months later, putting in applications, showing my face at dispensaries, giving them my resume, showing them all these certificates, all of these classes that I took. Look, I've already got my card. I can legally work for you. Just give me a chance. Everybody was looking at me like, you haven't had a job in 14 years. Why would we hire you? Why would you hire me? I mean, when you think about it, why would you hire me? So I went and I think indeed.com or something like that. And they had a kind of like an open house or they, they were having a job fair, that's it. 
So I went, in, I went on Indeed.com and one of these particular dispensaries was having a job fair at one of the casinos. So I was like, what the heck? I'll try. I went down and I told my story. You know, I, I have my medical card. I've had scoliosis. I am that stay at home mom that was hooked on pills, managed to get herself off of them and uses cannabis daily to function. And here I am and I want to go back to work and I want to help other people and show these other people that it's possible because at the time I didn't think that this was possible. I mean, it's still a year into smoking pot. I didn't know about edibles yet, you know, so I was like, this is not going to work until I, you know, actually experienced what they could do. And then I got more and more into it and then I took those classes and then I learned, you know, like this really can work and maybe my story can help other women or other men or just other people in general that want to get off all these opiates and don't think that there's any real way because you're scared like you don't want to go through withdrawals you don't want to go through all that pain but in the end you don't want to be on all that stuff either and you have to come to a decision in your life on if you really want to stop taking all that this can help you do that so I get through the job fair and I get called for my second interview, which was cool. I go into my second interview and I've got all my certificates and I got all my stuff and I'm like, I, I'm ready. Like I'll walk through the door and I will be your bud tender, like hire me. And, you know, and we had a good talk and everything. And you know, I went through my interview and he's like, you know, if you don't hear from us, you know, keep applying. He's like, I really think you'll be a good fit, but you know, we're only hiring so many people. And if you guys don't hear from us, you know, just keep trying because we're going to open more stores. I'm like, okay. And I decided, I was like, you're not going to forget me. I'm not going to get lost in the shuffle. So I ended up making like 200 homemade chocolate chip cookies because I was a stay at home mom. I got this. And I went to the dispensary and I told them that this was my follow up probably about a week later because they still hadn't heard anything. So I went down to the dispensary with 200 from scratch homemade chocolate chip cookies. And I brought them into the dispensary and I was like, this is my follow-up here I am this is my follow-up my name is Amy let's not forget me uh, remember I still have my dispensary card and I'm ready to go so and I can help you guys and I brought in all these cookies and I thanked them for the interview and I was just hoping that they wouldn't forget me and lo and behold three days later I get an in email that says you're hired you're gonna start your first day is September 18th. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got in. I'm in a dispensary. Now I'm freaking out. What am I gonna do in this dispensary? And I'm like, okay, well, my job is gonna be like, I'm gonna help these people. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna figure it out. So I've been working in this dispensary now for about a year. And I mean, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's been a long time since I've worked. Getting back into customer service and being around people, being around angry people. Why are you angry when you come in a dispensary? Let me, let me just stop right there for two seconds. You know, I was never unhappy when I saw my drug dealer. When, you know, I was never unhappy. When my dealer came up to my front door, I was like, yes, pot. You know, don't be angry at these dispensary workers. We're working really hard. We're trying really hard. And I understand you just want pot and you know, but like, don't get mad at your bud tender. They're trying really hard to get you high. They're trying to get you in, get you out, get you high. So just be nice to us. You know, we didn't do anything to you. Okay. Back, back, back to, sorry, went on some kind of weird rant for something. Okay. So now it's been a year. I've been in this dispensary and I like it. I love my coworkers. Working with a bunch of pot, happy potheads, this is my dream job. It really is. It's a lot of fun, but it is still retail. Um, so, you know, it's all about the bottom line. It's not really about the customer and it's corporate now. So I decided I wanted to start MedMom, a place that you could go where you could review different products. I could tell you what they were like, you know, um, the articles that I read and the stuff that I have learned with all the classes that I've taken and stuff like that, you know, I could give you one place that you could find all the information. 
uh, what an endocannabinoid system was, what a receptor was, and like actually how the cannabinoids attach to these receptors and make them work properly and help your body heal itself and all this stuff. I'm not claiming to be a doctor. I, by, am I, by no means am I a doctor. I did not go to medical school. I am not a doctor. I am just here to tell you what's worked for me, what's worked for my family, what's worked for my friends, what's worked for my customers, and how we are learning to dose and do marijuana together. Because there are no, there are few studies, but there's really not a lot of research out there on marijuana because it's illegal. Because the feds don't want to put the research into it. They can tell you all the bad things that they've found out, which are the list of bad things that happen to you when you take marijuana is like this. What they've found is a list of things like this that help you looking for the list of things like this that harm you. So that's all we know about it so far. Once it goes federal and we can start getting some real testing and stuff going, you know, we'll know a lot more about marijuana. So everything I know has basically been trial and error, classes that I've taken, and stuff I've learned on my own. Um, I just want to share the information. If there's another person out there that could benefit from this, that's all I want. I just want you guys to know that you're not alone, that you can do this and you can get off all of those medications that are giving you those side effects that are harming your insides so much more than this little plant that everybody has criminalized and made such a bad thing out of like everyone believes marijuana is so bad and that cannabis is just this terrible thing and it, my kids can tell you my mommy was on pills and did nothing but sleep but when she smokes a joint she's up dancing and doing stuff and going on vacation and we're going on road trips and we're going on hikes and we're doing all this stuff that they missed out on because the pharmaceuticals didn't help they didn't do anything they just made it worse so hopefully this video and the many many more that are coming someday when I figure out how to edit um, will hopefully help you you know get to where you want to get and hopefully you won't be in pain anymore so goodbye for now and I will be back with video two. have no idea what that video is going to be about yet I've still got to figure out how to edit this one. So thank you all for your time. Uh, click subscribe because there might be a second video someday and you may not want to miss it. Um, like me because everybody wants to be liked. And have a great day, everybody.